Uh, I'm starting to record right now because we're being cool guys. So, hey. Oh, creak, giddy, creak, creak, creak. That's my I'm sure, bones. I'm sure there's something <laughs> valuable you can get from this. The creak goes, oh, you're darn right. Yeah, that was my back. <laughs> we're just two cool guys hanging out. I like the specs, man. I like the glasses. Well, good. it's an 8-bit world. Oh, hey, Bobby, what, what are we talking about today? What's going on? All right, so welcome down to Future Live Musicians. This is our episode on streaming. How to stream your music in 2021. And we're going to feature a good friend of ours, Paul J. Herman, virtual producer and host of The Retrologists. And so around 6 o'clock, we're going to have our very, very talented friend, Net, and come on and do a track and show us how she does her streaming She's got an excellent following on TikTok right now, and uh, we've got to pick her brain and see how she does it. That sounds like <laughs> some cool things that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, yeah, you hit it right. Um, virtually producing is a whole new thing that's kind of come into the world these days, hasn't it? That... Uh, we we can't be in places performing so how do we do it virtually and it's it's really interesting too because each studio uh each backdrop each personality really shows up like i'm looking at your your backdrop there and you got all sorts of cool yep. books and titles that i'm probably gonna look up and i you know right. want to read and you got all sorts of little you know toys in the back there and we, uh, we call them tchotchkes. We like having tchotchkes in the back. Action figures. Yeah. And is, that, actually, is that Nintendo right there on the... Yeah. My, my <laughs> nice. Yeah, and you kind of get to personalize your space too. Um, Net's got a really great setup. Um, yeah. uh, you know, when when we do our Future by Musicians videos, they're usually on a set, you know, or we've got something that's... It's not really... We haven't done any live streaming, so that's why we're... Uh, we're, we're asking you how it's done because you're doing this weekly. You've been doing it for quite a long time now and you actually do it for uh, some of your work with, yep. uh, you know, with, your, with your business. Yeah. And this is, this is an amazing way to connect people all over um, at one specific time. You know, everybody can be in a chat. Uh, you can get a lot of things done. Yeah. Yeah, you summed it. You summed it up nicely. Is let's go back to one thing that you said before that. Um, I'm a big proponent of people should be able to look at your frame, this frame right here, this two and a half feet that are right here. People should be able to see that and get a good cross section of who you are and what you're about to do. Right. So I'm I'm a big nerd. I love all retro things. It's very clear. Although I've got blank space here which i kind of fill with things but the, you know it's very clear here that i'm i've got nerdy things behind me i've got comic books i've got uh, pop figures i'm wearing this hardy t-shirt I'm, I'm i really celebrate retro stuff so when somebody happens to stumble upon my live stream in a thumbnail in one way or another they can either engage or they just look at it and go that's not for me and they can keep moving right and it, it's kind of like having a having a club with Every single room has a different bar or has a different band performing. And you can kind of hear through the door, oh, I like that music, I want to go in there. Or, no, I'm not a big fan of that, I don't want to go through that door. So that's what your thumbnail is. Your thumbnail is a way of getting people to want to come in and say hello. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's awesome. You can see I've went with, you know, I've got the... Uh, yeah. The uncluttered backdrop there. <laughs> no, Usually no. When, when we do our... Uh, when we do our streaming, I'm, we're looking at the, or not the streaming, when we do our videos, we're looking at the studio. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is, yeah, it's set up for a recording room, so, yeah. It's very clear from your frame, if I'm going here, it's very clear from your frame that if somebody clicks on your thumbnail or wants to come in and, and you know, happens to be swiping across, it's very clear that you're doing something musical. You've got a studio. You got some studio stuff happening behind you. So, are, is he going to talk about Pro Tools? Is he going to talk about Logic? Is he going to talk about something? It's very clear. I see a piano in there. That's interesting. I might be a piano player. Maybe I want to click on that. That's interesting. You got an SPDS SX in the background. Hey, I'm an electronic musician. Maybe he's talking about electronic music. So, there's definitely an invite that happens in your frame, and I think that that's a really good start. That's really cool. Good job. Yeah. Nice. Nice. 
Um, that's what we do. That's what we want to do is we want to get people to come to our show in in ways that we haven't been able to connect with, to them. Right? We have a visitor. Oh, who's the visitor? <laughs> Fitz is our. Uh, he's our studio engineer here. Oh, hey, nice. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. There's been no. There's. He's how, awesome, how do I say man. this? This is my body. During during these times, the celebrities of like the the stars of the shows are always people's animals. Aww. Always, when a cat comes into frame or a dog comes into frame, that instantly like chat explodes with that. Oh, the kitty <laughs> cat! I love it. Aww. So that's kind of a really brief kind of rundown, slightly of just you know the, the, hitting the key points uh, for me is. Uh, how are things looking? Or no, uh, l- let me backpedal. Um, who is your audience, and where are they? Is is kind of the meat and potatoes of um, uh, live streaming. And then once you determine where your audience is, then you get into the absolute core of things. Is what do you need to do that? What gear do we need? Right is the question. Okay. Um, yeah, and there's certainly. Um, price conscious ways of doing it and there's very expensive ways of doing it and a lot of the time people have stuff already kind of in their back pocket if you're a musician already right now most of the time you've got microphones you've got cables you might have a mixer with you you've got those type of things if you are doing any type of home recording you probably have a recording interface that you're plugging things into and if you have those things well, you're ready to go right now you're ready oh. to go. You don't need to. You don't need to purchase anything um, outside of. We can get into some software later on. But you're you're kind of ready to go. If you're new to it, then the most important question you have to ask yourself is: What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Do you want to play guitar? Do you like to not to a screen? Do you want to do a talk show like where you're inviting people onto your show, uh, much like what I do with the retrologists? Um, do you, do you want to record a full band behind you? Maybe you've got like a six piece brass band behind you and they're all performing. Um, those are all going to require more gear and a little bit more production, but in the very end, it's all being siphoned through all the microphones, all the mixer, everything is just, instead of going to speakers on a stage, they're all going down into two cables, into your interface. You got it where it's going directly into your computer and into some software that's being broadcasted. So everything on the front end is exactly the same as you would treat a live show. That's the that's the deal. So nothing changes outside of the speakers. The speakers get replaced with a computer now. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Cool. Yeah. So you're basically, it's an audio and a video sample. <laughs> yeah. Funneled down this wire, down this microphone, into a mixer, yeah. into the interface converted into the computer send down some bandwidth up into the sky back down into somebody else's home 100 percent. that's exactly it <laughs> that's that's the signal flow and there's something super attractive about that when you realize that as musicians and just to clarify both you and i are musicians here we for years and years we've always been trying to get an audience to come to our shows to try to get them to come to uh, a club or a restaurant or a venue or Rogers Arena. We're really trying to get people to come to our shows. And now we live in a great generation, a great era where we can go to their living room. We can go to them and not inconvenience them with things like, you know, a lot of bands forget that when you want somebody to come to your show, it's not a matter of just selling them a ticket or having them show up. We're talking about them having to get a babysitter that night. We're talking about them having to get in a cab because maybe they're deciding to drink that night. Uh, we're talking about waiting in a line at, a, at the club to get in, uh, having to get dressed up, like actually having to get dressed up, showing up. How long do I stay? When's a good time for me to leave psychologically? Do I leave right after that band plays? Do I? Um, and then when they get home, they're just exhausted from a night out and to you, it was just, hey, can you come see my band? To them, it was a very long process of things, dominoes that need to fall into place for them to be in that place to see you, right? Wow, that's, yeah, that's, uh, right. that's, that's so true. It does take a lot of effort. Um, 
I've, I'm noticing I'm watching a lot more online and watching a lot more uh, like tutorial stuff, lessons and things like this. But also there's people that have reached exponential amounts. Uh, you know, their crowds are just, they're, they're quadrupling into the hundreds of thousands yeah. because they have the opportunity to get right into, you know, right yep. into everybody's pocket. And, you know, the, the quality now for the amount of money that you can, you know, that you have to spend uh, to get your stuff up online, it's it's not a lot anymore. You know, the, the prices have come down. The technology is, is uh, you know, it's there. It's attainable. Um, Yes. It's attainable, yeah. I mean, I remember when, as soon as we, as soon as this stuff happened, um, a lot of our shows, you know, kind of fell off the map as soon as, uh, you know, things changed with, um, you know, our lockdowns or whatever. Yeah. Um, we had to find a new way to continue to reach, reach people. So you go into Long and McQuaid and you're like, well, how do I do this? Or you ask, you know, you and, and uh, you're like, all these ways of getting online everything sold out <laughs> yes. all these go mixers all these uh you know these audio interfaces, interfaces. it's like yep. i'm you know it's like i put it on on the shelf and it's gone like in 45 minutes it's done that's right yeah truckload you know and and uh so there's a lot of people doing it and there's a lot of people that have made uh you know they've pivoted and and been able to address new audience fresh yeah. fresh new crowds um you know like you said, it's it's still it still takes a lot of effort to sit and prepare something and and open your mic and your your soul and your home and your your studio space to uh, to the world. Yeah, and uh, that takes yeah. another, you know, that takes another uh, uh, element of, of yeah skill and yeah. Uh, bravery as well. Well said. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The normally when you're staring down at six people in the audience you get to at least connect with those six people where now anything you're performing generally lives in perpetuity to anybody who wants to watch it after the fact so now you've got to have a very general view at when you perform because you don't know who your audience is going to be in the long run right mm. where does your audience live and that's where you should be live streaming to you should have generally if you're live streaming to multiple places that's a very dislocated like your your audience doesn't know where to find all your content so i'm a big proponent of if you want to reside on youtube and be a youtube person double down on youtube if you're going to be on tiktok and really um, grow and develop an audience on tiktok absolutely go to tiktok like I said, I've, I've chosen Twitch for uh, for my personal stream for the Retrologists. So we really garner and build community on TikTok. And community is a key, key component to live streaming. Stop, you if, stop me if I'm going on too many tangents and you want to pull no, me back no, somewhere else. But, uh, you know, you can perform to, you can pick up your guitar and go, hi, everybody, I'm going to play a set for you. And um, I'll see you at the end. Do, 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 do. And you're looking down at your set list and you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. And you end it and you go, thanks, everybody. And you end end the show. Just like you would play the Roxy or you play a show. You would typically go up on stage, perform and leave. Well, now in this era of live streaming, we have opportunity to slow things down. You can perform. You can be looking at chat at the same time, which is your community of people that want to help build you. They want to help grow your business. They want to buy your products. They want to buy your CDs or I'm dating myself with CDs. But they want to stream your music. They want to uh, engage with you. They want to know when you're performing next. And you have an opportunity while you're playing, you finish a song, you look down and go, oh, hey, hey, uh, you know, Danny or hey, Oh, it's really cool. You like that. Yeah, I wrote that when I was in, you know, whatever. And I really liked it. It's available on this, you know, between songs, you can be engaging with people or during songs, you can engage with people. And I also think that when that happens, when you have a community of people that are watching you and engaging with you, it does take a lot of pressure off you that you're not performing. If you make right. a mistake, it's cool. It's yeah. fine if you make a chord flub. You don't need to be so hard on yourself. You're right. just, everybody's there to celebrate music or everybody's there to celebrate whatever you're doing. And there's no pressure to be perfect. You can right. just do your thing. Is that, yeah, is that resonating with you? No, yeah. that's amazing. I mean, every time we, we get to uh, 
have a chat or I come on to the retrologists. Yeah. Um, it's super chill. It's just a, you know, it's just, it's just conversation. And, right. uh, you know, and, and people kind of kick the ball around and, and it's so relaxed. And I really, I appreciate that a lot. Oh, nice. We have, yeah. we have a big, we have a big um, motto with us is that if it's not fun, we don't want to do it. Right. That's got to be the deal. And I really, truly feel that when it comes to live streaming, it should be the same way as well. If it's not fun, if it's really pressurous on you, and we're, let me be clear here, if it's if we're talking about like live streaming to those platforms, I was saying, if we're talking about live streaming to like Rogers Arena through Live Nation, or we're doing something huge production, well, you better know your stuff. You better have practiced your parts. You like you, the let, let's make that a, a a good performance. But if we're talking about performing to your community of friends and your community of people, then there should be no pressure. There, it should be. It's fun. almost fun. Yeah, it's almost totally. fun to see a little bit of, you know, a little bit of an accident or totally you know, right? just, just something go off the beaten path or change the yeah. verse or whatever. Right? People seem. Yeah. You you've heard me ask the question at drum festivals all the time. People seem more human when they make mistakes. Yeah. All the time. So I always ask the clinician. I always say, "Can you demonstrate something that you have not perfected, so that we mm. can see you make a mistake?" Oh man. And it's really interesting to see professionals stumble over something or something they're working on in the moment and they just seem more human. And with that being said, boom, relatable. And right. I want to engage more. If you're thinking about performing Rogers Arena, you should probably go see a show at Rogers Arena. Mm -hmm. Right? You should probably right. see what it's like from the perspective of the audience before you get up on stage and do it. So the advice I would give to people right away is that if you're interested in in doing live streaming get in and watch some live streams right get in find your favorite artists get right. into twitch go into youtube go into facebook see who's streaming get an idea of the format that they're doing it um engage with them hey how's it going are they engaging back are they not see what type of format works best for you and then you can apply that to your kind of business plan of how you want to live stream uh, it's a big component right now for people to be visible, uh, for people to connect. And if you're pro and you got a, you know, a head start like you at it, then you're going to be, you know, you'll be working and you'll be doing something still that's artistic and, and uh, something that you care about. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. You're right. W the skills that you th didn't think you need would have needed to rely on, you yeah. now rely on. And doing this full time, producing full time and live streaming full time, <laughs> has actually given me a bit of that satisfaction to create like let, let's be clear uh bobby you're not just a drummer you're not just a producer you're not just you know um uh, a video editor you're a creative hmm. the end right and and i truly believe that i'm a creative yeah, enough, enough that if it's not drumming if it's not um you know it, it is empowering other people to be creative yeah you got it which hat right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. exactly right so i yeah. want to empower other people so if that means me being a creative being a talk show host like i do with the retrologists where I, where i get to like hang out and build a community just like i would build an audience instead of me playing drums for a show now i get to talk and i get to introduce other musical guests or i get to video game or i get to you know uh, whatever I want to do now, but it's still being creative. It's still being creative and it's still triggering that part You're of my brain. Pre yeah, presenting. Totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So being a creative, you don't stop doing that. Sorry, dude. You're in that world. Anybody yeah. who's listening to this right now, if you're a creative, that's what you do. You're going to be doing that for the rest of your life. Sorry. That's your yeah. thing. Live streaming is exactly the same as busking. Okay because the audience, every time a new person walks by, they're hearing it for the first time. Rotate, right? Right? And right. that's typically what live streaming is about. I don't want to say rarely, but um, in le if you've got a good community of people, they're there from the beginning to the end, but it wouldn't be unusual for you to be performing 45 minutes later during your set, a, a, a group of people show up or like three or four people happen to come in and go, Hey, what's going on here? And you're in the middle of a song and you have to reintroduce yourself. Oh, Hey, I'm Bobby James. I'm drumming dirty destiny. I'm performing here. Some tunes. Uh, let's, let's play some, let's play some music. Um, mm. and you just keep going. 
And that's what we found. We found that originally Retrol just wanted to start off as a 45 minute podcast. And then when we went live, we talked for an hour and a half. And then we were like, okay, well maybe it's an hour and a half long. The next time we streamed, it was three hours long because we just, wow. the, the chemistry and the, the community was just so great. Every time somebody would come in, we were just able to segue into the next conversations enough that after three hours, we're like, well, we better wind her down now. It's getting a little late. So let's, let, let's close it up here. And, you know, station break. This is where we're, this is where you can find us on Instagram. This is where you can find us on. Okay, great. Thanks everybody and go. Um, but you got to wind it down now mm. after three hours. And now, like I said, it wouldn't be unusual for us to be doing, you know, uh, last Thursday, we just did four and a half hours. And it's wow, great. So to harken back to what we were saying before, you got to have a good seat. You got right. where you're sitting in this chair for four hours straight. It's a very underrated piece of technology. But if you're sitting comfortable, you're not going to get burned out mm -hmm. while you're in front of a computer screen all day long. Say I'm an artist and I'm I you know I just finished my CD. Is this a great way for me to come to kind of come out and and connect with people and and point them to my Spotify channel and try and get streams? How do we turn that into uh, to dollars. rent coffee dollars? You know, yeah. everything you just said there. Yes to that. Um, using live streaming as a method of marketing is a lot of the time what it is. You're you're telling people your brand. They're getting okay. to know you personally. Um, if you're playing music, then they're getting an idea of what music you're playing. Um, and then pointing them in the direction to get your stuff. If you sell merch, if you sell music, if you sell, like if, if you got a streaming service, if you literally sell CDs or records, you want to be able to have that on your profile page where people can get and consume, where, where can people go and consume your brand? Right. Right. The, when it comes to the monetization, it's a little different from platform to platform, but generally it's based on donations. Okay. And, and you can set up through your PayPal and through certain, some third party software. If you're on Twitch, if you're on YouTube, you can set up donation, kind of like a tip jar, for lack of a better term, okay. um, where people can donate to you. And because we, these platforms are designed around community, your community wants to support you donations happen often which is good news which is very wow good. that's great within twitch architecture there is something called um where you would subscribe to somebody okay and when you subscribe the streamer gets money because you're actually tipping them through the word through the uh, subscribe architecture but what's neat about it is that amazon owns twitch and Amazon gives every prime user a free subscription to give to any live streamer per month. Wow. Right. That's great. So <clears throat> if, if you're a prime user, if you're a prime uh, Amazon prime and you go on Twitch, you have one free subscription that you can give to drum and dirty or retrologist or any of your favorite streamers and to that, net uh, to <laughs> net absolutely yeah. where you where in the end they get money so oh, that's great. that subscription actually turns into money for me and it costs you nothing which is great that's oh wow that's good to know right yeah uh because there's millions of people on twitch getting these free subscriptions all the time from people is not unusual. It's great. It's, it's encouraged. It's very common, right? And it costs everybody nothing. And then from time to time, you will get people coming in and dropping a lot of money to support you in one way. It's not unusual for somebody to get a $500 donation or a $10,000 donation. We've seen that. We've seen people out of the blue just suddenly get massive donations from people because there's people that truly want to support arts or support support gamers or support whoever within Twitch. Um, That's wonderful. Donate, yeah. Uh, so let's talk microphones. That microphone that you're using right now sounds incredible. And just for the record, every time you move your lips, there is no delay. Like yeah. it is. This is bang on. Oh, thank you. And you're... Wait in another place and it's going through the mic through your audio interface through your computer you know wi-fi boom back out to my Satellites. system and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like how is that so quick 
Well, so it, there's a, there's some factors that come into that. Most definitely, there's a lot of factors. Software in particular is a key thing, which we'll touch, touch base in a quick second, but software is gonna be a key thing. Um, this microphone um, is a Rode uh, pod mic. I happen to like it mainly because of the price point was really good. You can use as simple as an SM58, you can use an SM57, you can use any style of microphone you want that works with the accents and qualities of your voice. And most right. singers, let's be clear about it, most singers have microphones that they've, you know, used over the years that, that work with the characteristics of their voice, right? You know, the same way we've got drumsticks that work well for us. I would hope that a lot of singers have chosen a microphone by now and that's their rig that they take with them from gig to gig. The way I have things set up right now is I have, a, have my microphone going into a video mixer. So let, let's, let's talk about not necessarily entry level, but let's talk about the level just above that. I have my uh, microphone going into a Roland VR4 HD video mixer that allows me to actually have, I don't know if you can see, yeah. I got Mario Kart, I got my Nintendo, I've got lots of things plugged into this, and I'm able to control volume, I'm able to control the features that you typically see on a, on a mixer, such as gates, limiting, uh, EQ. I'm able to do all those type of things on this video mixer in front of me, including things like picture in picture. If I change to this, I'm able to do picture in picture very easily. So I kind of have a production unit in front of me that helps. That's incredible. How many channels in? You said, is it a four? That's what four. you said. Four, correct. Four. Yeah. So I can have four video, four HDMI going into it. And wow. then I'll, I'm able to change between them. I'm able to do picture in picture. I'm able to have the audio from everything separately, but that's my hub. That is the place in which I have all my microphones and everything going into that video mixer. VR4 HD. If you happen to pull that up. Nice, screen. yeah. Um, from there, that's USB 3 into my computer, into my PC. And then we get into the software end of things at that point. If you're just getting into streaming, you're the uh, just like I was saying before, there's opportunities where if you have a recording interface, if you've already been using like a two channel Rubik's, like a Roland Rubik's uh, interface, um, or, or and like a Go mixer, if you've got something simple that you're using right now to plug your microphone in to get it into your computer that you're already doing recording with, done. You're good to go. All software, all streaming software will recognize an interface as your microphone in inputs. You're good to go. And Very as a matter nice. of fact, the preamp on that is is great. The 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 absolute entry level is if you are using some software that where you are doing it from a mobile device where you're just using the microphone on your phone, maybe. And when you get into streaming services such as Instagram or TikTok, a lot of the time you are just using your mobile device in front of you and it's just picking up whatever, however you're performing in front of it. So wow. that that's your options as well. That's great. Yeah, I see a lot of people they're using, uh, they'll use a headphone uh, with the microphone here and then they would yes. be able to still hear uh, yep. you talking. And it yeah. kind of cuts down on some of the noise and stuff too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's a super budget friendly way. And it's basically, we already have it if you have your phone. You got it. The, the last way of doing it is um, uh, the more, I, I don't want to say more common, but most people are going to USB microphones these days. So you can get a Yeti, you can get a blue microphone. There's a few different brands that make microphones where it's USB directly into your computer. That means that you don't need a recording interface. Um, it's all done USB into your computer. There's a convenient factor to that because you don't need to worry about any other cables. Um, the, the one downfall to that is that it limits you to the computer. That right. you, can't, you can't use that microphone going into an interface after the fact. You have to only use it with your computer. And also you can only use it um, with the length of the USB cable as well. Not like XLR cables where you can connect things or have the XLR cable go into a sub mixer. XLR, which to be clear is this type of microphone, Uh, that type of microphone allows you to can go into any video mixer, any audio mixer, any interface, uh, any pro level gear um, very, very easily. So there's a pro and con either way. In the end, what do you want to do? 
If you want to be a broadcaster, if you want to be a guy behind the screen talking like this, USB microphone is a great way to go. If you want to be a guitar player just singing with a microphone in front of you performing, USB microphone, done. Great idea. Perfect. If you want to get into some better production, if you want to get into a little bit more control, if you want to get into longer runs, if you want to get more people involved, if you want to have a band behind you with multiple microphones going in, you'll need a little bit more professional gear. And, right. uh, and that's attainable these days. So you're good. Very cool. Are you familiar with anything that I could use to adapt this microphone to this phone? Is there... Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so Rowan, coincidentally, makes a interface called the Rubix series. And the Rubix works with iPad. And I believe it works with iPhone as well. But um, uh, it works with mobile devices um, as an interface to get audio going into your phone. No problem great. For, for recording to GarageBand or using broadcast software outside of that as well. That's great. Good, good options. Really yeah, good options. Yeah, very cool. There's yeah. always an option um, for live streaming. It's. I, I hearken back to what I said. Go see what other people are doing. Ask right. questions. Go into streams. Build. Find a community that you can involve yourself in and ask lots of questions. Perfect. There's lots of options. There's so many options that you can get into to get into getting yourself uh, broadcasting. Yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, let's, software. I mean, your, your video yeah. camera is yes. nice and clear. I'm, mine's a little more fuzzy on the edges. I'm, you know, I've been working in a lot, a lot of 4K and a lot of our videos are done. They're shot in 8K. So I get the yes. luxury of looking at some of this footage and bagging on my computer because it can barely move the files. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you're, you're, you kind of have a, a happy medium between clarity and, uh, you know, optimized video size. Um, mine right now, I'm using the, I guess it's the FaceTime camera in my iMac. In my oh, computer. you are? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's just the, com yeah, it's just the camera right off the top of the computer. Great. Um, I do have all this other gear to set up. You know, I, I just thought this was a great way for me to show you that you can do it. Perfect. Through uh, just your home computer. This is just right out of my iMac. Uh, it looks like you're using, uh, you have a different, you got a lens or something on that? Uh, I do. On, what do you got? I'm using a DSLR right now. It's the uh, Sony RX10 III, I think, right now. So nice. it's a, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, a more pro camera that I'm using. Um, but you can use just about any, like you're using a webcam, a big, big component to that. Whatever you, whatever gets you live streaming, do it. And most people, if not everybody has a webcam in their computer. Do yeah, it. I'm surprised right? at how this looks. I think yeah. it's uh, right. lighting. Yes. If I, sh if I killed my lights right now, it would be a different Dorian yeah, here, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's the same deal here. I've got I've got some lighting that I mean we'll get into that in a second. But this yeah. this camera uh, is very very clear and it picks up every little nuance of lighting changes. Um, this also has a lot to do with the I'm going into a video mixer, so you'd have to get into if you're going to use anything with an HDMI out. If you're getting into a pro level camera with HDMI, and that could be a GoPro as well. Um, you know something as simple as you know just a regular old Hero Three GoPro. Um, you can HDMI out that into what's referred to as a capture card. And right. you're going to want to get into a capture card, which is HDMI to USB 3. It's basically, okay. a, it's basically a video interface that your computer will rec recognize this nice camera as a webcam, quote unquote. Right. So you, you can find uh, capture cards at your local computer stores. You can find them on Amazon uh, and they're not that expensive. They can be anywhere from, you know, a good one from $80 to $250 is a good place to be. And to get to what you were saying earlier, that's why it's so smooth is that the capture card is doing all the processing, the encoding that exactly the latency that can happen if I'm speaking and there's latency between my voice and what you're seeing on the screen that has a lot to do with the encoder uh, on your capture card as well. The better the capture card, the, the cleaner the signal. With software, there's a lot of options out there, a lot of options. With, with mobile devices, you're only looking at, like I said, you've got your phone in front of you for things like Instagram, which Instagram does not right now allow for third-party software to go into it, which means you can only use it as your phone in front of you, which some people would say is a downfall. 
but it keeps it mobile. It keeps it right. so that you're only doing it from your phone. It's spur of the moment. It's short live streams. Right. Nobody's going to be streaming for six hours on that generally or doing a talk show on it for a lot of the time. They're just keeping it short, micro content. Right? But for what we want to do when we want to get into doing live shows or if we want to get into doing talk shows or if we want to do anything like that, we need to get into some better software. And the most common software is something called OBS. OBS, everybody knows OBS. Do I think it's the best? I don't know that because there's lots of other options around it. Uh, it's something that you're going to have to give a bit of a try to, but it's but OBS is a great place to start. Yep, perfect. So with with OBS, we can we can get you into the essentials of exactly how to get into live streaming, and I'm going to show it to you in this video right now. Hey everybody, let's start with the bare essentials of how to get you started with OBS and streaming really quickly. After you've downloaded OBS, you're going to want to install it onto your computer. I have it on my MacBook right now. And you're going to load it up and have this screen directly in front of you, which has the essentials in front of you um, and really blank, allowing you to customize really quickly. The area that we're going to be looking at right away is the sources. Your sources are going to be anything from your webcam. It could be a camera. It could be a recording interface. It could be a USB microphone. It could be a web browser. It could be many, many different things, including images. But for the moment, we're going to talk about the things that are uh, common for everybody who's listening to this potentially. So let's start with something like a web camera. I'm going to hit the plus sign down at the bottom here, and I'm going to be faced with a whole bunch of different options that I'm going to be able to select. And the first one we're going to choose is video capture device. The video capture device, we're going to call this webcam just for the sake of simplicity here. Boom. And now we can choose the device that fits what we're looking for. You're going to have different devices that show up here than I will, but for the moment, I'm going to choose FaceTime camera just to keep things simple. FaceTime camera, I can set the resolution. Look at me, I'm right there. I hit okay, boom, I'm able to move this anywhere. I'm able to resize it however I'd like. I can move things around. I can customize it very simply just by dragging around, very simple. For the moment, I'm gonna hit this little eye down here and I'm gonna remove it. And it's just gonna be hidden in the background. For the second option that we're gonna wanna do is audio. I'm going to hit the plus sign once again, and I'm going to have the option of choosing many different things here, but we're going to choose the audio input capture. We're going to call this microphone. Actually, we'll just call this mic. Done. I'm going to pull this down, and in here, you're going to have many different options. You're probably going to see an audio interface. You're going to see a USB microphone. You're going to see many different audio inputs, depending on what you got connected to your computer. But for the moment, I have MacBook Air microphone. I'm going to select that. Boom. And look at that. This microphone is now showing up in this VU meter very, very easily. So I know that my, my microphone is working flawlessly. Very good. Now, the third part of this is going to be, how do I customize it? So there's many different customizing options when it comes to overlays you can get from Streamlabs. But for the moment, I'm just going to keep it simple and just put a general background in. So let, how do we add the background image? We're going to go down to the plus sign once again, and we're going to select image. And I know that on my desktop, I've got a background image already in place. Let's call this BG for the sake of background. I'll hit that. I'm going to give be given the option to hit browse. I hit browse, and now this is bringing me to my computer. On my desktop, my purple controllers are there that I use for the retrologist stream that I do. And that is now in place as my background. The important thing to recognize in your source section here is that think of it in layers that if whatever is on the top is going to be on the top layer and whatever is on the bottom is going to be in a bottom layer. So right now my background image is above my webcam. And now if I move that down below, boom, I pop up right there. So now I'm going to choose my webcam and I can move that anywhere I would like on top of a background image. So in a matter of a minute or so, we've just managed to add a, a webcam, an audio source, and a background image that we can move around and have any way that we'd like. So once we have it set up the way that we want this scene to exist, with each scene is going to be a selection of all the different uh, sources, then I can lock things down. I can lock them in place so that they do not move, um, uh, so that all my settings stay the same, which is good news. 
Once again, for the moment, I'm gonna remove my webcam. Let's go into the settings mode. You're not gonna make a lot of changes in the settings modes here. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, but let's talk about the, once again, essentials. Um, the number one thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is in the stream section. When you go into your Twitch, when you go into YouTube, when you go into Facebook, you're gonna be given something called the stream key. It's your personal stream key that allows this broadcasting software to properly handshake and broadcast to that destination, whether it's YouTube or Twitch or an RTMP of any kind. So once you've been given this stream key, you'll want to put it in here and hit OK, and then the software and your destination communicate properly. Once that's in place, it's all butter. Now you can start going in and customizing things even more, things like your video output, what do I want my resolution to be? If you've got a special video card, for example, that can handle a little bit better encoding, then you're gonna to wanna to make adjustments in here. Same with audio. This is your video output ratio. If you want it to be your uh, broadcasting in 1080 or 720, once again, you're gonna to wanna to check with your destination, uh, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, to see what is the best broadcasting resolution you're going to want to use. For example, Facebook generally receives in 720, so you're not going to be broadcasting in 1080 to there, where Twitch, if you are not an affiliate, it'll be 720. Once you become an affiliate, you're going to be able to broadcast in 1080, and once you become a partner, you're going to be able to broadcast in higher resolutions than that. So you'll be able to make that adjustment right here. In your hotkeys, you're going to be able to make some quick key settings here if you want to be able to change between scenes to make things really sleek. You can make a lot of adjustments here and your advanced settings. Once again, you can get into very, very detailed settings of how you want your hardware and software to be able to communicate. You're not going to be making a lot of changes to that at all. And now you're ready to go. You can add your webcam. There we go. And we can go over here to start streaming and we can hit start streaming and we'll be broadcasting directly to our stream key destination. Thank you very much, everybody. OBS. The other options that you can use is something called Streamlabs OBS, which is basically a streamlined version of OBS uh, that is through uh, something called Streamlabs, which is where you get all of your overlays, which is where you get all your notifications. You would typically, if you're doing a live stream, you would have it, um, you would have your stream connected to Streamlabs and that's where you control what, how you want your notifications to look like when you get a new follower, when you get somebody um, uh, donating money to you. That's, those are the things that pop up on the screen. Streamlabs OBS is all integrated into one. So okay. that's, an, that's another option. Uh, the third option is Twitch Studio. Twitch just released a, a new piece of software that is basically a front end for Twitch. And it allows you to basically put cameras in places, put, input audio sources and it's a super easy interface to use as a front end specifically for twitch that's great so that's very simple uh, another option is something called x split x split is it, for the longest time it was obs and x split were the two most popular broadcasting software and uh x split although it performs a little bit better it's a little bit sleeker interface there's a pay for it as well as that you can pay into x split and get more features added onto it um, versus obs that is completely free hmm. so that's the great and, yeah that's... and then the, so the software that i use is something called Streamyard, which is that's specifically what... designed for uh although it's got great video and great audio it's more primarily designed for having guests in, in an idea that I'm able to actually move things around and I'm able to, you know, cus customize screens a little bit and just have a production, like have a production um, angle to it. I can nice. sit here and control everybody's cameras. I can bring people in and out, guests. I can bring them in, um, I can mute them. Like I've got full production control of the show. And this software allows me to broadcast to numerous locations. It could be the Twitch, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, and multiples of those, I can do that all from here simultaneously uh, wow. up to eight different locations within the pay of, of uh, where I am for StreamYard. The, uh, wow. the free incredible. version is still, although it's watermarked, the free version of StreamYard is very cool if you want to get into doing um, shows where you've got guests coming in. If you're a musician and you're performing and you want to be able to have another guest come in and you guys talk about music or he performs and then you perform or whatever, 
then this is a, a really good piece of software to do that. That's, yeah, that's great. Now, cool. would you record oh, that and have it posted for later, uh, you know, on your site for people to watch that didn't get to see it? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. You can, you can not, not only would you use this software to broadcast, but you can use it to capture content. And then that gives you the ability to, uh, as you were saying, you can edit and you'd be able to create micro content from it and then post that to wherever, whatever socials you'd like. All right. So without further ado, we've been waiting for this for a while. Paul and I are probably boring you to pieces here. We want to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, Net. Let's bring her onto screen. She is a music artist and producer that mainly streams on TikTok. And we got some questions for you, girl. How are you doing? Ooh, hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Oh, awesome. Glad to see you. Your room looks great. Oh, thank you. Just set up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was saying, uh, I was saying earlier that um, uh, I started following you on TikTok about a week or so ago. And um, um, I wasn't expecting, and I don't want this to sound pandering, but I wasn't expecting somebody to be performing and engaging with your community as much as you do. And, uh, oh. and there's something absolutely brilliant and golden about that, that you can be an example for a lot of people uh, who are getting into live streaming um, uh, or who currently live stream just as a good example of what mm -hmm. to do. So, oh, yeah. thank you. I appreciate that. It's It's been a lot of fun. I haven't really live streamed a whole lot until this year and like just getting on TikTok and that being such a big part of it. But the community there is like really, really nice, really like supportive, really like, oh, yeah, we're so excited for you. It's 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 been pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you. TikTok is all about community. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Community building and, uh, and community support. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bobby, go ahead. Yeah. So you were in our last video, the last future live live musicians video for monitoring, and you had some great things to say, um, you know, on actually performing on stage and stuff. So streaming is a, a, a totally different environment. Yeah. Um, it's It seems much more casual, uh, mm -hmm. a, little more, a little more comfortable than being on a stage with a full speaker system and everything. So, you know, you invite us into your, um, you know your space which is great and it looks like there's i'm looking online here a sixty-five thousand other tiktok fans of <laughs> net how, how did you go about building that over the last year or so <laughs> um yeah it's like it's literally just started building since like february of this year um i kind of set some like new year's goals so like keep posting on tiktok and just be more consistent and the cool thing about TikTok right now, if like some people don't know, is it kind of gives everyone a level playing field. Like Instagram and some other platforms, unless you already have a following, no one's really gonna see your posts. It's not really gonna get pushed to anyone, but I find TikTok is cool because if you're just saying something that like resonates with people, that's like something, information that people need to hear, um, it's gonna reach them because the algorithm and how that all works figures that out and oh this is valuable people like this and they push it and um so yeah just started sharing um tips about songwriting um production i've been learning all of that stuff this year so i've just been kind of sharing like things i've learned and like things that help me and kind of think in the perspective of like okay if i'm someone who's just starting this for the first time it's super overwhelming like production and recording and all the software and all the equipment and what what kind of things would be really valuable to me if i was just starting out and what kind of uh, videos would i be like oh wow that's cool i feel like now i can go and start doing that or i can apply this right away so um yeah that's that's pretty much it and so oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems like there's a lot of people that are asking questions. I mean, our whole Future Live Musicians series has been based on that, too. And, you know, coming from the stage, we haven't done any streaming at all. And you and I have been on stage many times mm -hmm. as well uh, with, you know, large crowds. And, and uh, now to see you kind of taking off on a totally different platform, pivoting from a stage you know, in your own home studio there, mm -hmm. you know, you're reaching a lot more people than being able to just play one show one night. You know, you can, I, you know, you're you're taking your uh, your setup to shows that you're playing and you're including 
another level of audience, not only the audience you're playing for, you know, mm -hmm. physically right there, but another audience that you're inviting uh, to participate as a community in that performance online. Like this is this is really incredible. You, you know, yeah, it's, it is like really cool to to think of like audiences I would never have been able to reach because that's I think that's like the coolest thing that like blows my mind. So I'm watching people like, hey, I'm from Germany. Hey, I'm from Korea. Hey, I'm from yeah. Belgium. I'm from Australia. Hey, it's morning here and like people from all over, lots of Brazil uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's wild to to like reach those people and especially now, like even when I am like playing live, you're kind of like separate because you can't really be close to people and people are still like kind of hesitant to like go out anywhere. So it's nice because you can kind of give people like a taste of that. And so they're like, oh, this like, you know, bright my day. I've been missing live music or I've been missing um, music in general and being able to go out. And this is kind of giving them a taste of that and kind of bringing them into that experience, um, which is cool. It's yeah. super fun. Yeah. <laughs> can you uh can you talk a bit about um the, the 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 psychological change that musicians who are live streaming now that when you step in front of a camera and usually you have your set list you perform you're like i'm performing now for the next hour and a half or the next mm -hmm. hour versus nowadays where you get to slow things down and what you do so well that i noticed within your week is that you perform a song you address chat you talk to chat, mm -hmm. you engage with them, you see how they felt about things, if they've got requests, if you're, mm -hmm. you're talking to people one on one, and then you're saying, well, I'm gonna kick into another song here, here we go. And this is, you know, dedicated to or this is whatever. Mm -hmm. But you, you really get to slow things down and engage. How, how did you how did you not come to terms with it? But um, how did you adjust your uh, material for that? Yeah, um, no, that's cool. I haven't like thought about it in that way. Um, but I guess I guess it was kind of easy for me in the way that I've played solo a lot over the past like five years, like playing so many like solo sets for hours and hours. So I have quite a large repertoire that I can just kind of access. So I haven't actually written a set list in a long time. Nice. Yeah. I I kind of have a general flow, general like this song after this song, how it's gonna go. So I think it was kind of natural that way. Um, to like get that feedback and like someone like says like Coldplay or someone says oh can you sing something by Nora Jones and I'm just like yeah sure um and and I think I think it's nice to be flexible that way and it makes it more fun and gives it a little more like life if that makes sense yes. um because that's actually why I I don't like making set lists I used to and then I I just kind of like reading the room in this case, the live stream room <laughs> and like yeah. kind of what's working, like people, what people are responding to. And, um, and so I feel like that's something that you can apply to live streams. And also like when you're playing live in that sort of setting to be able to react to like what's going on around you and like, what's, what's the vibe? Like, where are we? And like, what are people responding to and what would flow nextly next for like this next song? And yeah, but it, it is it is kind of an adjustment. I do like slowing it down too. It's kind of nice. I feel like it's nice to give a little breather, um, acknowledge people. Um, yeah, it's been it's it's been nice. I don't know what else I want to say about that. No, I think, I think you hit all the right points. Sorry, Bobby, you were gonna say yeah. You get bored of playing your guitar. You like read people a story. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell some jokes. Sure. Yeah, tell some jokes. Sure. There's yeah. there's some yeah. great make, make some tea. Yeah, there's, there's some, some great there's live some streamers exciting that, yeah, things, you know, happen in between. Sometimes I'll just just talk about how I'm feeling. I actually totally like hit my guitar on like the live stream um, <laughs> the, yeah. or on like my camera set up the other day and just sent my camera and everyone watching flying. So that was a nice. nice moment. Not very <laughs> often do you get to throw the audience across the room. <laughs> yeah, and so I think to back up, everyone's like, ouch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, I'm dizzy. I'm like, well, those yeah. clips, those clips live in perpetuity now. Good job. It's there. Yeah. It's there forever. I'm like, now yeah, you've right. learned. I'm also very clumsy. That's another, it's another good fact. You're human. I'm very clumsy. Yeah. 
I, I think uh, I think that hits it on the head is that people get to see you being human as opposed to you saying, okay, I have to go into performance mode now. Yeah, right? totally. So you, you, you hit it on the head there a second ago when you said something like, um, and, and Bobby and I talked about it earlier, um, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. That's mm-hmm. always been my attitude with everything. Yeah. If it's not fun, live streaming in particular, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. Totally. And would you agree that with what you do, before you press go live or when you hit go live, mm-hmm. you know that you're going to, you're going to have some fun. There's no pressure. Oh yeah. It's, it's really fun. Honestly, it's like, makes it, makes it so exciting. I think too. And like, again, just like reaching people kind of all over and like getting the comments, getting that feedback. It's a lot of fun and like people interacting and like talking and asking questions. And it's always fun when I hit the harmony pedal too, because every two seconds someone's like, is she harmonizing with herself? Where's the backup singer? (laughs) I, I noticed that as a matter of fact, when I was watching your stream, I noticed that the moment you did it, everybody wanted to know uh, how you're doing it, what gear you're using, because that talks a lot yeah. about, you know what I mean, that uh, yeah. when we get into the influencer market, but yeah, we, can talk, yeah. we can talk about that if you're using something very dominantly, people want to know what you're using. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? No, totally. What is that? How do I get it? How yeah. do I, how do I yeah. set that up? How are you doing that? Yeah, it's it's, yeah. Uh, it's interesting for sure. Sorry, I'm taking it over here, Bobby. Go ahead. No, it's great. I'm just listening. <laughs> this is what I, I, I mean. What I when you're talking time. about gear, what's uh, what is the uh, vocal harmony pedal that you're talking about? What um, so it's a TC Helicon Play Acoustic pedal. Ooh. Um, this is my treat to myself. Couple last month, it was Those, a total yeah. impulse purchase, and I am super happy I did it. It enhances your performances. Uh, yeah. and, and just gives you that little element that's a little bit more than the, the next person with an acoustic guitar, right? Totally, totally. Yeah, way to go. But with that being said, those pedals and those effects require a little bit of precision, a little bit of tap dancing, you gotta be, <laughs> yeah. especially the harmony pedals. Yeah, you got to be a yeah. little precise on when you're going to be um, it, turning it on and off. So cahoots, that's yeah. still a term. Do people say that? I don't think people say <laughs> that. I think so. That's cool. Cahoots to you. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of these because I'm playing and I'm singing and yeah. now I'm like I just and I'm and I'm so fussy with where I want the harmonies too so I'm like oh it'd be great if it was just on those couple words <laughs> and just get it in and get it out and um okay well let's let's talk about okay you were just talking about set list and different songs mm-hmm. and stuff like that so how like what kind of musical content can you live stream like are you allowed to do covers is it something that once it's recorded or once it's streamed it, it's done like you can't uh replay it kind of thing how does that work um oh like can i like play like covers on live stream yeah yeah i think the only the only um issue you're gonna run into with live streaming is if you're playing like someone else is recording i right. think they can like yank you off of there but i think because i'm creating the recording of the music um it doesn't apply cool. um TikTok architecture yeah that's that's what i was curious about i'm not familiar enough with the dmca uh regulations for TikTok, mm-hmm. but i can certainly speak on behalf of twitch and youtube and facebook which are militant by mm-hmm. the way yeah. um if you're djing uh, and stuff especially yeah, yeah absolutely um the, the company i work for during the day it wouldn't be unusual that when i'm doing a stream they're triggering samples or they're triggering uh sounds that are from other music and a lot of the time facebook will recognize that and they do one of two things while you're streaming they will either give you an, a notification that comes up on the screen um or they shut you down done your live stream is done yeah. If they, if, if they, if, if Shazam, I guess the rule is if Shazam can recognize it, then it, you're shut down. And that also goes for YouTube as well. Now, conveniently, I stream on Twitch and Twitch, although there's been a lot of conversation about DMCA these days, the, the deal is that you can perform on the stream. It just can't live as content on your profile as a replayable right. uh, content. Uh, do you know much about it for TikTok yet? Um, well, I think TikTok lives, they, um, there's no way to like post it after the fact, unless you can like save your live video, um, which is kind of cool. Cause then you can go back and be like, well, that looks, that looks rough. Oh, should I have to fix that? <laughs> but, uh, so you can like save the actual video like to your phone after, but they don't have a way to like post it. 
Um, and from what I know, yeah, if you're playing, if you're like on Spotify playing top hits, they're probably gonna like yank you off of there pretty quick. Um, but covers and like doing your own covers, lots of people are post covers on on TikTok too, and that seems to be totally fine. The, uh, the licensing on TikTok is certainly a lot more massive in the sense that there's all top 40, like all music is available to be played on there just as uh, just as audio to begin yeah. with. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they've kind of covered their basis a tiny bit on that, I suppose. Right. Yeah, I think you have to you have to play the music from within TikTok, so like built yes. into TikTok system. So even if like you played a song I think like certain songs aren't on TikTok. Most are, but if you like added a song to TikTok that like wasn't actually on TikTok, it would like remove it. I think that's how that would work. So you have to like go into TikTok's music and select your music for your video that way. Um, or you can add your own music, but it, it can't be like other copyrighted music. Like I could add like a track, if I made like a track and I wanted to add it in the background, I could do that and just be an original sound, but. And you really want those shareable sounds as well, right? So mm -hmm. you, you yeah. want to be able to import your own audio into it. Totally, um, totally. Yeah, I wondered if, you know, with, with um, uh, Facebook, a lot of the time it's like 30 seconds or 45 seconds of time. They kind of give you an opportunity to adjust yourself if you happen to, have walk past i don't know you're in a gap or something like that and it happens to pick up some music through right. the stereo they're at least giving you opportunity hey by the way there's some copywritten music that are in that we can hear don't do that mm -hmm. right at least gives you 45 seconds to a minute and that was one of the reasons i think instagram only limited their clips to one minute is that mm -hmm. you at no point would it ever trigger a copyright warning if i just decided to have a sample of me um you know, with my phone up against a, a speaker or some kind of a song. Mm -hmm. But now TikTok has changed their their formula to three minutes. You can now have three minute um, clips on your uh, profile. So wow. I, I wondered if there's gonna be any issues on that at all. Mm. Yeah, I, you can have three minute videos on TikTok? Yep, now you can. Really? But, Sorry. I didn't have that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think they just they might have just recently rolled it out. Uh, oh, cool. But it's it's for people that have a lot of followers. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Oh wait a minute, that's totally you. I don't. don't I that's don't totally you. So you that's totally you. Don't back paddle on that. <laughs> yeah, I, it's interesting when I think of like a three minute video on TikTok. She's like, I, I can do like, twenty minute videos. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think people are gonna watch three minute videos on TikTok. Well, <laughs> well said. Yeah. Well said. Re re reten retention is going to go down big time. It's going to get rid of um, uh, part. It is going to get rid of part one, part twos, which is good, mm -hmm. I guess, because yeah. uh, there's been a crazy amount of those happening. Um, yeah, but strange. you're right. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the most engaged uh, content is the you know seven seconds to ten second clips. Let's go with it, right? Yeah. So and which is th those are still going to be the content creators that are going to keep moving up the uh, yeah. up the chain like like yourself. So yeah, yeah. and yeah, that's the it's, it's so interesting because I it's with me and with lots of other creators, I see like they'll they'll spend so much time on this like 55 second video that has so much good information packed in it. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so helpful. People are going to love it. And then it doesn't do as well as the seven second video you randomly did. You didn't even plan it. You just decided, hey, this would be kind of funny, and then you just did it, and that's Correct. the one that gets thirty thousand views. And they're like, yeah, you're, okay. not, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. And what is your audience? What is what have you conditioned your audience to want? If, yeah. if they're if they're used to you performing a tune for a minute, then they're going to stick around for a minute. But if yeah. you're if you're hoping for organic hits, where somebody is like, oh, this is interesting then there's techniques to it, as you know, with tech, TikTok. Yeah. There's, there's ways of getting people to engage. Yeah. And it's a, it's a whole other, Bobby, it's a whole other marketing conversation that can happen mm -hmm. um, in regards to how to engage and how to keep uh, retention high on your, uh, on your profiles, right? Yeah. So uh, when we were invited, when we invited you to, you know, be a part of this, we were talking about what would be a great time for you to stream, like what, to go live mm -hmm. what's a what's a like actual on the clock what's a good time for you yeah like usually like early evening seems to be a good time um 
but really there's no like horrible time I don't think I think like the earlier in the day the better because what I see is you have people like I'm on the west coast so then if it's a little earlier than if it's six o'clock here it's like nine o'clock on the east coast and then you could get some people late night even in England and stuff I see people yeah. like it's like yeah. one in the morning here and then you get people the next morning or like the afternoon in Australia and like Korea and Japan so because like you really get it pushed from like all over there's no time that seems really bad but I would say like early evening for me has been been like a successful kind of time probably That's like awesome. earlier in the day the better I, li I like what you said there though that for me because yeah. you're right you know once again you you might have a huge Swedish audience and suddenly oh, right. if you're streaming if you're streaming at 12 o'clock at night you know that it's like nine o'clock in the morning for them mm -hmm. does TikTok have algorithm or um analytics to show your your spikes and your um uh your statistics for your uh content yeah yeah they do they have uh they have quite good analytics um good so I think from from my analytics, I know most of my audience is from like the states and then yes. Canada. Um, so in that way, I know that most people are gonna either be like West Coast, East Coast, in between kind of time. So that seems to work. But then it also reaches a lot of people who don't follow me, which is kind of interesting. So that's like that's a great thing about live streaming on TikTok is like so many people are just gonna come across your live stream. And so that's really where I get the most followers for the most part is like just people scrolling through the live stream. They tune in for a song or two and they're like, this is cool. I want to see this again. So I want to follow you. And I'll get like 900 followers in a live stream session versus like a post. Maybe you'll, you'll get like, I don't know, 50 or so. It all depends, but I've found that's just a really good way to build an audience too. Let's, uh, let's be very clear here. That mm -hmm. people people can scroll right past you at any at any point. Totally. They do not, they do not need to stop or they do not need to follow, which means no, no. you're cr you're creating content that actually is making people engage and want to follow. Like yeah. The, like if we if we're just <laughs> laying all the cards out right now, people don't need to follow you, but totally. they are. Totally. So you're totally doing something right. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks. That's right? nice. really nice. Yeah. Like. It sounds, it sounds like I'm giving you a compliment, but I'm literally just spitting facts. Yeah, no, totally. And yeah. that is that is like, obviously your content is important. If you're live streaming, people aren't just gonna automatically follow you. You have to have something that's of value in some way or attention grabbing or different or interesting. Um, I think I probably stand out from the rest of the girls who are just sitting there doing nothing. So maybe, maybe sure. <laughs> they're like, whoa, there's a girl and she's, She's doing something. Yeah. She's not just sitting. <laughs> what is she doing? Oh, I kind kind of wow. like this. Okay. Wow. Well, I'd like to see her do more stuff. Yeah, cool. she can do stuff. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Bobby, you got any questions? Just trying to get my lighting right. No, oh, you look good there, <laughs> Bubs. You look good there. You look good. Uh, question. So, uh, best times to stream. Uh, are there any ways that you promote when you're going to go on? Like, how do people know uh, when you're going to go live? I've honestly been really bad at doing that. I'm going to be better <laughs> at it. Um, sometimes I will just like put it in my um, bio, like in TikTok. Like, if I know ahead of time I'm going to be streaming like Thursday, Saturday, I'll like put it in my bio. So if anyone like, goes there, they can see like, oh, she's streaming at this time. Um, and then I encourage people a lot to go follow my Instagram when I'm live streaming because that's when I usually will like post stories um, about when I'm going and streaming and I found that's helpful. Um, and then also give like some people incentive to go follow your other platforms like hey if you want to know like when I'm streaming next that I usually will post on my Instagram stories so go follow me there and then you can uh, get notified and yeah it seems to so the, your your process is learn the song, <laughs> find mm -hmm. a place to, you know, get smiley online and talk to people, mm -hmm. and you do a story to Instagram to drive your traffic to TikTok. 
Um, you is Facebook a big thing for you? Um, Facebook isn't a huge thing for me uh, lately. Honestly, TikTok has been my main focus for kind of this year. Um, and then probably Instagram second. And then basically everything I post to Instagram goes to Facebook. So I am like on Facebook, but um, it's not as much of a focus. It seems that's not where my audience is as much, um, just with the with the times, you know? And, and YouTube? Are. Yeah, um, I need to probably spend a bit more time with with youtube i think i get a little overwhelmed with like social media too so yeah. it's oh. easier to pick a lane and, and and focus on that and um Good. have those other ones kind of grow you said there. it you said it really well there pick a lane is mm -hmm. uh, we, we talked about it earlier and you know bobby was asking you know what, what's the best streaming where should you stream and i'm mm -hmm. like where's your audience wherever yeah. your audience is that's where you go and totally. you don't necessarily want to dilute your audience by sending them to 20 different places to get your content you want to curate them and get keep them in one place whether it's youtube or twitch or TikTok or facebook wherever your people hang mm -hmm. send people to that place one place i think is better than trying to do everything and getting overwhelmed um because i know especially if you're like a music creator you're not just creating content you're also creating music and you're doing shows and you're doing other things so to have that balance of okay because i think wrapping my head around making youtube videos instagram videos all these kind of different avenues i think it would just kind of take away from the other music creation stuff i'm doing and then then the content i'm posting maybe wouldn't be as authentic because i'm not actually spending my time doing music most days i'm just trying to create content <laughs> so, yeah. so well said I, what a delicate balance between content creation and live streaming, right? Because there's totally. some, let's be clear, there's some really good content creators out there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But uh, in, in the end, and I don't know if Bobby's going to get to this, but in the end, as a creative, you need to uh, make money. Let's be mm -hmm. clear about that. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to um, sell your brand, whether it's your album, whether it's your merch, whether it's, you know, pe sending people to your website, wherever. Um, this is kind of your voice to do that. So Bobby, I might be overstepping and asking this question, but I'm genuinely interested is things like monetization. I can speak on behalf of Twitch and I can speak of, of YouTube, but when it comes to TikTok, you know, there's, um, U S and Canada, uh, ways of making money. And, uh, you're probably well aware of that. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah. So like how to monetize the TikTok live stream. Yeah. So you do actually get live gifts on TikTok, um, which is kind of cool. So people buy little emojis and then they can send them to you as you're playing. Um, so in that way, it's uh, it obviously depends on the day, but the more viewers you have and the more like interactive you are on your live stream, the more gifts and the more tips you're going to get that way, which has been pretty cool. And um, and I think from from there, it's just kind of been about building the audience and like sending people other places where like, now you want to buy my CD or you want to buy my music or you want to contribute in some way. I have uh, I have like a tip jar function in my uh, TikTok links. So um, people can go there if they want to donate after the performance and stuff like that. I, I have heard Twitch is a little bit better for the donations that it's a little more lucrative that way um but i kind of see it as a double value with like building the audience on tiktok um to set it up so i can you know prom promote my music and being an artist and that's really valuable and then there are those little monetary things that that uh, do help for sure <laughs> yeah. being able to at least send people to places where you can you know, as Bobby said earlier, uh, to pay your rent. Like if yeah. you're going to spend time live streaming, if you're going to spend time doing this, then you want to be able to send people to places where you can, you know, make some money. That yeah, sense, right? totally. Uh, especially as creatives. Let's be clear mm -hmm. about that. We're, I, I don't think that we're living in our parents' basement or we're not, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, a lot of the time. But I, it's like, no, we, we have cell phone bills to pay. So, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Gonna yeah. pay, yeah, pay for your bandwidth. 
Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, tw Twitch can be a little lucrative on that. You're right, uh, but it's based on the same principles as TikTok generally mm -hmm. is community building. And yeah. if you've got community building, then you have people that are supporting you uh, financially. They're supporting you by giving you word of mouth to other streamers. Uh, they're giving you uh, reach, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And they're also joining your Discord channels to actually like contribute to conversations. And uh, you, you said it best earlier that it's really cool when chat is talking to chat. That's mm -hmm. community. And totally. I think we're we are so used to, as musicians, we're so used to performing to an audience and they shut up mm. and listen to us, right? That now we live in a world where we're in the audience playing while people are talking all around us to each yeah. other about the performance. And that for me is, that's why I live stream. That's mm -hmm. literally why I live stream. I want, I want those little pockets of conversation showing up where I don't need to contribute to it. That's just happening. Totally. That's community. That's community. Do you feel that? You feel that? Oh yeah, totally. And especially like as, as I've been doing it more and you see the same kind of people show up and I feel like I have my, my kind of champions in the, yeah. in the comment section that are like, people are like, oh, where is she? Or like, where's her spot? Does she have Spotify or different things like, like that? And I have this little army of people and like, yep, look her up here. This is what's going on here. Thanks for, for doing that. And people just responding to each other. And, and it is cool to, to like see that community. And I kind of think too, of someone who's, you know, watching that and they're maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's been hard, like people in quarantine and kind of feeling isolated and alone. So it's kind of creating a community where they're interacting with other people and feeling like they're, um, in something and a part of something. I think that's, that's really cool. Yeah. It's so much better than, you know, playing lose bar with like the four dudes standing with their backs against the stage <laughs> on their phones. <laughs> well, you're, yeah, you're right. playing to the bar staff. And you're like, yeah, exactly. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think we, we played enough shows where the audience is the other bands you played with. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's totally right. to play. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. Or the, or the bar staff. And I think, uh, and, uh, Annette, you've got things right that you're not only performing to your audience but you're performing to the the phone next to you where you've got a virtual audience happening as well mm -hmm. it doesn't end there like we're mm -hmm. there's lots of fun stuff that can happen with live streaming and and i would even say this um i've got lots of people saying yeah i've gotten into live streaming now but you know when things get back to normal i'm looking forward to getting back on stage mm -hmm. and my attitude is this doesn't stop you don't just yeah. suddenly stop live streaming this is what you do forever now in companion to performing right. on stage this is totally. like you don't i don't think a lot of people really understand that this is how people want to be engaged now yeah to turn it on their tv right now to enjoy your content totally no it is cool it makes it very accessible and just right. reaching people you never would have too which is super neat do, do you do you want to throw to net playing a tune yeah let's do it is that cool? let's uh yeah that's I think that's perfect opportunity. You want to I'm give a, us, yeah? Do you want to uh, show us what you're doing on your channel? And yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Um, uh, why don't I do this? Just really production wise, let me um, uh, throw. I'm gonna make net full screen. There you go. All right, I'm gonna play um, a little song. This is an original song. It's called "Run." I hope you like it. Just run. 
stop dreaming about pink sky So I'm burning sunrise Or you see all your blue eyes Every time I close my eyes I think about your body think about me I think about you only It's my disease You're dreaming of ways We could get away What you say, what you say Will you run for me? Run for me Can you just run? If you're coming for me Coming for me <laughs> that was seriously amazing. Oh, okay. I haven't I haven't heard that yet. Oh, it's on my EP. It's not new. I don't want to nice. say new, you know, spoil it, but right. <laughs> yeah, that, that wow, that's wonderful. I, I can so. yeah, and you know, I can see how you engage with the camera, and that's another uh that's another level too. Oh, okay. um, you know, we we did a live stream. Uh, Christina and I did a live stream a little while ago and there was three giant cameras and you know it was uh, they it wasn't like a phone it was like scary these things were like looking at you like oh, a, uh, like you yeah. know one of the ones in the hockey game or something you know and, and we're like oh where's, which one should we be oh, uh, you know and and uh you know they got the big monitors and all this stuff and it just you know it as soon as you figure out that you're looking at a million people through that thing you know, oh there's kinda, a little bit of pressure on that oh yeah. most definitely Bobby and I talked about it earlier. When things go wrong, you're more human. Per the, when you strive for perfection in these things, you're going to make so many mistakes. So be cool. Be cool with making mistakes. Your chat will love it. It's more relaxed. It's super, super cool. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes it more fun when there's no pressure. You don't have to think about it. You just press go live and you go live. Right? Um, maybe, Nat, you can, uh, you know, sign off and give, give a couple of parting words on, you know, inspiring the people who are trying to do this right now yeah for sure so i guess like my advice for anyone who's like thinking about live streaming um if you're a little nervous or you're kind of working up to it my advice is just click live go do it the first one is the scariest i remember like my heart was racing I'm like oh my god what if i people hate it what if people come on and they give me like hate comments or i don't know you just have all these weird fears before you do it because it's unknown but um generally like people are so appreciative and loving and like accepting and the audience on TikTok has just been like amazing and like so so nice and just know that every time you do it you're gonna get a little more comfortable you're gonna get a little more free and not so rigid and you'll start recognizing people when you keep going so my advice is just to start start doing it be yourself people want to see you be yourself People want to hear your stories, hear your songs, um, and yeah, it's it's worth sharing that. It's worth sharing that with the world. You have something to share. You should be sharing it. Don't wait. Just just do it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your amazing talent, and I hope that you get you get all this. You know, all the wonderful uh, audience you know, traffic towards you. And, and I just really hope that everybody gets to see what you do because I've been watching you along the way and playing with you along the way. And <laughs> yeah, things are going. Thank you. Well, thanks, Bobby. Yeah, it's exciting. Love it. it's fun you, time. You, have a new, you have a new fan over here too. So oh, great. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so sweet. Nice. Awesome. If, you, if, you, if you ever see Last Digit of Pi, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there, is there anything else we, before we close her down here? As I, I feel like uh, I'm running a show here. As, yeah, as no, I, I think that's do. great. Sorry. 
Um, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for future live musicians streaming in 2021. Thanks, Nat. We'll get everybody over to your site. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. You guys rock.